in our home studio. It's great to have you back watching CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus. Obviously, we are indoors again for today's coverage, but it's what's happening out there that is headlining our show. We'll start in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, a nation of islands between the Caribbean Sea and the North Atlantic Ocean. St. Vincent itself is the largest island here, and its highest point at just over 4,000 feet is the La Soufrière Volcano. It's erupting. A lot of St. Vincent's population lives more than 10 miles south of the volcano in the capital of Kingstown. But there are thousands who live near the mountain. And one thing that's a threat to them are pyroclastic flows, when a mix of lava blocks, ash, and volcanic gas rush down the slopes of a volcano. The U.S. government says these flows can destroy almost everything in their path. In addition to that, the nation's emergency management organization says a massive power outage occurred on Sunday and a lot of homes had lost running water as well. So the disaster caused by La Soufrière could interrupt life there for months, according to St. Vincent's Prime Minister. The air has filled with ash, so much so that people on the island say it's hard to see the volcano, but they can smell it. Sulfur has been carried through the air as far south as the capital. Officials are telling people with respiratory problems to be on guard against that. And they say La Soufrière could continue exploding for days or possibly weeks before it quiets back down again. This happened before in the month of April, back in 1979. Four days short of the anniversary of that, La Soufrière exploded again. Months after a volcano on the Caribbean island of St. Vincent began threatening to erupt on Friday, it did just that. Early Friday morning, La Soufrière volcano blew ash and rock thousands of feet into the air and caused people who live in the vicinity of the volcano to have to evacuate. Luckily, the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines had for days warned people that the volcano was going to explode at any moment and about six to 7,000 people in the immediate vicinity of this volcano were warned that they needed to leave the area immediately. The government sent in empty cruise ships to ferry people out of harm's way. And according to the government, uh, now hundreds of people have uh, taken to shelters and have evacuated the area. There is no immediate word on deaths or damage uh, to structures because uh, right now uh, people are just warned to stay away from uh, this exploding volcano as it sends uh, thick plumes of ash into the sky. Another concern is that while these people are being evacuated, while residents are being evacuated and going into shelters, that could cause uh, the spread of the coronavirus uh, to pick up. And so uh, the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, has warned people that as they are being evacuated, as they go to shelters, to try to maintain social distancing, to keep their masks on, uh, to uh, be aware that, of course, they're still in the middle of a pandemic on these islands. It is not clear how long uh, this volcano will continue to erupt for. It's been about 42 years since the last eruption. But as it continues uh, to uh, put smoke and ash into the sky, it is not safe yet to return. And people, uh, for the time being, the, the government officials are telling them uh, to simply stay away uh, while the eruption, this very dangerous seismic activity, continues. Patrick Gottman, CNN Havana. Osiris Rex and Bennu are drifting apart. Sounds like the plot line to a science fiction soap opera, but this is a NASA mission to an asteroid. The rock is called Bennu. The unmanned spacecraft that went there is called Osiris Rex, which is short for Origin Spectral Interpretation Resource Identification Security Regolith Explorer. It launched in 2016, and it's part of a more than $1 billion effort to collect a sample from an asteroid and bring it back to Earth. That has been done before. In 2010, a Japanese spacecraft that had traveled to a different asteroid managed to bring back its dust to Earth. Last October, the U.S. probe briefly touched down on Bennu and collected two ounces of material. It's been flying around the rock ever since, but after its final flyby last Wednesday, OSIRIS-REx began distancing itself from its objective and will head back home next month. If all goes according to plan, the spacecraft will arrive back on Earth in September of 2023, along with the piece of Bennu gathered from the touchdown. 10 second trivia. Strawberry, Buck, and Sturgeon are all the names of what? Classic car models, full moons, baseball hall of famers, or endangered fish? 
Strawberry, Buck, and Sturgeon are all moon names. The pink moon appears on April 26th. Many of the moon's nicknames date back to the early Native Americans. They named each full moon in every month to help them keep track of their planting and harvesting schedule. The full moon in April is known as the pink moon, signaling the first appearance of the wild ground phlox, one of the earliest spring flowers. When you have two full moons in a calendar month, the second one is called the blue moon. One of the more notable moons, the harvest moon in October, also known as the hunter's moon or the blood moon. This is when the leaves are falling off the trees and the animals are fat. So this signaled to tribes it was time to hunt all they could to get them through that long winter. And another thing to note is that the moon does not appear pink during the pink moon, red during the blood moon, or blue during the blue moon. The only thing that can really alter the way we see the moon is if there's a lot of dust, haze, ash, or smoke in the atmosphere, the moon can sometimes have an orange or red glow. Nasty weather moved over the Florida Panhandle this weekend, and whether they were vacationers on spring break or locals just trying to enjoy the beach, they probably didn't envision this. A giant water spout, a rotating column of water and mist, was filmed storming from sea to shore on Saturday. These commonly occur when there's severe weather over the ocean. High winds, high seas, large hail and lightning can all coincide with tornadic water spouts, according to the U.S. government. When they move on to land, water spouts can cause damage like regular tornadoes, and this one reportedly did. The government of Panama City Beach says it destroyed at least one home and ripped the roof off a convenience store. Better weather was in the forecast Monday and Tuesday. We have one more little story to tell you about today. We're taking you to a place in Germany where everything's been miniaturized. In the northern city of Hamburg, you'll find the Miniature Wonderland. It's the world's largest model railway, but it's also where other cities, nations, and landmarks have been reconstructed on a much smaller scale. And the workers there, the real ones, have just set a big musical record. Klar, nicht alles perfekt, aber man muss einfach mal probieren, mit Weingläsern äh, Verdi zu spielen. Oder noch schlimmer, den Bolero, wenn man nur zwei Oktaven zur Verfügung hat. Und deswegen sage ich, dieser Weltrekord ist ein Mega-Weltrekord. Der wird uns nicht so schnell wieder genommen, da bin ich mir ganz sicher. It's no small wonder that you can depart from a miniature airport and make trips to places like South Bend, America. Maybe one day they'll add Babe Egypt, Minuscule California, Sierra Leone. I guess it just depends on whatever's in their pee wheelhouse if they're going to have undersized lands, pick a universities, puck, etc. It's really the ceiling that's the limit, y'all. Today's shout out goes out to Ridgeline Academy, the real one. It is located in Anthem, Arizona. Thanks for making us part of your day. I'm Carl Azus for CNN.